can connect and test until five minutes. We are live, it sounds like. Okay. Uh, good morning. This is Monday morning at nine o'clock uh, Eastern Standard on October 17th. And this is the Tattoo Weekly with Jake Meeks, Lauren Gregory, and me. I'm Gabe Ripley. And every Monday morning, we cover some news topics from the, the, the past and maybe uh, talk about some fun things for the future. This is all beaming out on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what's going on here and how you can join in all these other live streams while we're doing some tests. And uh, well, yeah, so I guess I'm going to try to just get this going here. Um, I have a script so that I don't uh, lose my place. Okay, this is where we would start the uh, edit if we were. Uh, welcome to Guy Agenson's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattoo artists, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are all invited to join into these live streams to catch up with us in real life, ultimately to share with each other, inspire each other, and do better tattoos and get better tattoos together and create art. Uh, better art. Uh, you could find Reinventing the Tattoo in either of the app stores, that's uh, the Apple or Google, just search for Reinventing the Tattoo. There is the Reinventing the Tattoo YouTube channel. Uh, there's a Roku. So if you have Roku, do a search for the Reinventing the Tattoo app. And there's uh, like 15 uh, channels going on at any given time, 24-7. Uh, so all of your fun replays. Uh, th that same replay playlist is also on the homepage of Reinventing that um, you could check out. Uh, yes, and then we are also beaming out on all of the major... Uh, podcast directories. So you might be listening to us in the Apple podcast or Spotify. Um, either way, if you're not watching us on any of those other channels and you love them, then you should go find Reinventing the Tattoo there. You can always find the latest and greatest re uh, for Reinventing on reinventingthetattoo.com. Uh, there are free courses on history and uh, there's a free community there. There's a full, like I said, if you go uh, down, there's a re plays 24 7 there's all those channels including drunk critique against our uh better judgment uh as well as the professional development courses that is the reinventing the tattoo canon that you've probably heard lots of people tons of thousands and thousands of tattooers talk about if you don't have a new digital copy of the canon it's like 400 a year it's uh, kept up to date it's got tons of videos it's got years of um, monday exercises on replay so you could follow along and draw and kind of uh, catch, you know, it's, it's next best for being there live, but if you missed it, you could still uh, uh, re-experience it. Then, uh, yes, what else we have here? Oh, oh, so Special Effects 101, that's the new uh, update. Uh, so this is a quote from Guy. We are always looking to expand our toolkits and nothing beats those quick, simple tricks that can make all the difference. I know from experience that it's usually a bit more complicated than that. It's more like a full, well-rounded understanding of the process plus a bag of tricks. So yeah, check it out, uh, reinventingthetattoo.com. Uh, is to get to Canon. I'm supposed to plug the next show. Today's uh, the next show would be oh uh, tonight at five at five p.m. every Monday is uh, Feelings with Robbie Ripple. Uh, you may have caught him on uh, some of the actual uh, network TV tattoo TV shows. And every week uh, he's uh, inviting people to beam him. I think uh, he's got a co-host. Ah, it's not here in front of me. I think it's Dusty D D D. I sorry, I got dyslexia. I think. Anyways, five o'clock on Mondays uh, with Robbie Ripple. Yesterday's show was the Reinventing Drawing Group with Jason Lisa that happens every 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Let's see here. Uh, I plugged Reinventing the Tattoo, uh, tattoonow.com. I do technology for tattooers, and I'm definitely uh, I'm launching uh, three sites this week, as well as a whole set of comprehensive tools. Actually, what's really fun is I'm working with some freelancers now. So if you're a tattoo shop or a tattoo artist looking for some artist support, virtual artist support or virtual artist management, um, I think Lauren might talk about it. Anyways, I'm wrapping this up, this intro. I hope it's working everywhere. Um, Fireside Tattoo Network is another YouTube channel. Jake Meeks is the, uh, the ringleader for that. You should check it out. Uh, okay, I think we're pretty much through here, right? Uh, positive reviews. Sorry, I'm falling apart. It's Monday morning. Uh, it's uh, uh, positive reviews out in the channels. Wherever you're watching, because all these channels are new, even though reinventing's, you know, very old. But um, your, your positive reviews bounce everything up in the algorithms. Constructive criticisms to management at reinventingthetattoo.com, as well as, um, I don't know, any any other uh, any other conversations. If you want us to come to the conventions or whatever, although I'm kind of avoiding them. We are headed to Hell City. I guess we could start the show now. So usually I would. I, I have no idea. I'm not controlling. It. I have no idea what's going on. Ha. Um, We're good, Gabe. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure I've had my meds yet. Anyway, how, uh, how are you guys? 
doing pretty good. How are you, Jake? I'm good. I'm good. After that 40 minute intro, we have about 15 minutes left to uh, <laughs> go. You know, we, uh, we learned something. We keep meaning to uh, make some recordings of it so that yeah. we could just chop it uh, down to like get, get it five minutes or under would be the uh, ideal course. <laughs> yeah. But there's no ads in between, so. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Are we doing intros real quick, or are we just going to jump into the show? Intros. That would... Intros. Yeah. All right, I'm Jake with Fireside Tattoo Network, where we blur the lines between tattooing and fine art. Go to firesidetattoo.com. Very nice. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Um, I'm Lauren with uh, Reinventing the Tattoo, and I've also been doing some cool stuff with Gabe lately that we might kind of get the rabbit hole um, thing going but yeah nice to see everybody today is the 50th episode so i thought it would be cool ah. to see you guys today absolutely uh oh 50 well I'm, I'm glad i did a full intro i'm gabe ripley from tattoo now and paradise events and uh i do some freelance work for uh some awesome people and i'm excited to uh yeah, just talk geek and, and business with people every wednesday is when i talk with people every anyways uh gabe ripley tattoo now all right now we can play the old intro that's right yeah well, great, great i have to skip that today <laughs> the file is uh mia oh, oh okay okay so skipping, okay skipping the old intro Maybe actually you know what have... i spoke too soon let's roll our intro clip you guys all right, all right. <laughs> <Perfect>. Cheers. <laughs> but uh yeah you have to give me a little slack because i'm a little tired today <laughs> i was at a really cool convention that i'll talk to you guys about in just a minute that we drove through the night to get back. All right, here we go. just as good as the last time i saw it yep we, we should have had a new one for our 50th episode that at least had the correct date on. oh man mm -hmm. amazing that we've gone 50 episodes where we probably had like 40 of them with uh the, the, the wrong time uh yeah. sunday sun, sunday nights is just too much what's going on here with my yeah. camera here you know yeah i don't see you i don't, I don't see you yeah, you know, when we moved it to Monday mornings, I thought, wow, this will be a lot better. But then for some reason, my Monday mornings have become busier than my Sunday nights. So that's just the way that it goes. Just you, uh, you make time for the things that you make time for, right? So that is true. Yeah. So how was everyone's uh, weekend? What what show were you at, Lauren? Uh, Resurrection Island. Um, oh right. Dennis put that on a breaking skin tattoo in Bridgeport, Ohio. So the actual convention was in Wheeling, West Virginia. I got to say, it was, it was very well curated. It was a good event. It had a lot of personality. Um, it's hard to say because, you know, Chris Taylor put on the Indie Tattoo Expo recently, you know, previously as well. Uh, Derb's got Health City in Columbus. But I'm really impressed with what Dennis has um, put together for Resurrection Island. I've got tons of pictures and videos, all sorts of stuff. Um, Jason Leaster was there. Sweet. You have uh, some of those things to show today? Uh, yeah. Um, beyond that, last night was really cool. Uh, I don't know if you remember meeting Elaine. She was at the Red uh, Red Tree event, the Reinventing Live at the beginning of February. Gabe, okay, do yeah. you remember? She I was taking the, the seminar that I was getting tattooed at. So Jason Sorry, and, I, I just popped back in. Okay, so Jason and I happened to be in the... Jason invited to Elaine to work in his booth at Resurrection Island. And uh, she was tattooing the model that I was shooting one of the Resurrection dolls this weekend. But she tattooed a pumpkin. I swear, like the first thing that came to mind was that it looked like if Bob Tyrell had a daughter. I know that's kind of like an extreme thing to say, but it was like feathered in. But she was at the seminar. I don't know, Gabe, if you remember her. Uh, 
Uh, I- yeah, I do kind of actually. Yes, this is uh, you were saying this is one of Jason's friends from uh, yeah. Maze South. Yeah, 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 but yeah, it made the true. weekend really special because she won um, Tattoo of the Day yesterday for Black and Gray. Nice. First award or uh, anything like that. Oh, fuck yeah. So Jason sent a little text over to Bob and he um he gave the the good word. That was pretty cool. Awesome. Really cool experience. Oh, that's great. You know, uh, we, we were just uh, setting up, uh, working on Black and Gray Week down at uh, Unify with Bart and uh, Pepper in Florida for uh for next year uh a couple of cool people have already confirmed so it's uh i think it's in may we haven't gotten the dates everything but uh one of the things we're thinking of is um you know those, those seminars and and uh, people that have taken them there's another fellow who uh took uh black and gray week actually i was thinking of black and gray week uh this guy gabriel oh shit now i'm gonna have to find him there's another guy gabriel that'll show you his work he does uh, uh amazing black and gray shit now he's doing uh, he's teaching he's got a youtube channel and stuff it's awesome I can show you guys Elaine's work too while we're at it because it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Let's check it out. But yeah, it was cool to see the reaction because we all had like an end of the night tequila toast, you know, and then um, mm-hmm. we turned around and she was kind of realizing that she was, that Marissa was the winner. It was a really cool experience, like I was saying. Yeah, amazing. that's great. Here we go. Oh, yeah. See if you see the Bob that I'm talking about. These were up in their booth of pretty cool stuff. Yeah, awesome. Man, I had that reminds me seeing that saw. I have one of these, one of those saws from um uh what's that guy? Old five and dime. Do you guys anyone in the chat know old five and dime? I don't know the guy's name. I think he's out of St. Louis or whatever, but I got one of his hand painted saws. It's like it says like tattoo be gone or something like that on it. And it, it hangs in my uh hangs in my studio. Mm-hmm. I love old rusty saws with uh mm-hmm. with uh like that are painted on. I'm gonna try to wear these glasses. I don't know if you can try to wear some glasses today, but they might fall off. They're broken. Uh, yeah. I always feel horrible. Hey, this was a, this was a convention here. Yeah, it's really, really. Awesome. And you guys How did some uh, live coverage uh, yesterday, right? Oops, sorry. We did do some live coverage yesterday for Jason's uh, drawing group. So uh, yeah, we set up the cameras a little differently. We set up one, you know, just in the booth looking at what was going on, and then Kyle actually was there too, and walked around with a phone to get you know the booths. Pretty cool. Nice. When the mics were working, it was pretty cool. When the mics were working. When the mics were working. Ah, techie. Mm-hmm. The, uh... Yeah. Otherwise, it was nice. Awesome. Awesome. That's exciting. So who's uh, who's going to make it to um, uh, to Richmond this coming weekend? Just me? Just you, Jake. And Dan, who's on the and chat Dan. right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Dan's going to come help me out. It was unfortunate. I heard at the last minute, one of the main reasons that I'm going to Richmond is to uh, record the um, the academy, uh, mm-hmm. which Jesse does each year, and he had to cancel it this year. Oh. Uh, the lack of lack of sales, and I, I jumped on a call with him for a little while yesterday, and it was really just a uh, lack of promotion, really, because I mean it's a stellar lineup, really great, tattoo. fantastic lineup, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah he does. He gets some it. illustrators, some NFT folks. He has these two guys that are going to be there that um, that I forget their names right now. But they did uh, uh, an NFT drop earlier this year that did eight million dollars in the first hour. Oh, <laughs> so they'll be exciting to talk to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Although now, now is it what? You know, well, of course, now it's only six point three million dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, That's, uh, right hey, but, uh, but actually, before we move on to, well, I'd love to talk about, uh, well, I guess if it's canceled, it's good to, to kind of let people know that the not the Richmond show, but just the. Uh, academy that's on monday yeah yeah the show uh, is still going on it's just the monday academy uh, so everything else is happening let me uh, i want to uh follow up with the black and gray uh uh artists because uh it, yeah it's a, it's a good call and it's really fun to showcase previous uh previous students work because uh sometimes it gets killer so quick and this guy this now this first uh black and gray week was a while back i don't know it must have been five years ago six years ago maybe but uh, you'll see here that uh, I think we did, we did like four days of seminars in a row. This uh, his fellow is uh, fellow Santiago Gabriel. Look at these. He's out of San Diego, mm-hmm. okay. and uh, he does have a, a full YouTube channel where he'll, he'll help break some of this stuff down. But uh, here I'll just grab the really nice. first one here. I uh, let's find uh, you know. 
some of this uh, you know obviously the hair parts are yeah. the uh yeah really nice this reminds me a little bit after last week's show i think it was someone in the chat mentioned fred tattoo who i've followed for years but he hasn't been in my feed in forever so i took a little time after that show and went through and just looked at all of his black and gray work and it's real it's some of this this uh these animal portraits reminded me of it uh it's really just so good this guy like i forget you forget i mean of course they're you know they're oh yeah like him, but just like oh I went back and looked at that. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> i went back and looked at that cat that we looked at with the green eyes uh the other day uh -huh. was fun, and he didn't believe it was real it's uh it's pretty impressive yeah great work look yeah. at that Get uh, get Fred down for Black and Gray Week. You think he wants to come to Florida? We would. Well, he'll be. He could be on the list. Although it's only five uh, folks. We'll, we'll do another one if he wants to come, though. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I think you could probably squeeze him in. Yeah. We'll we'll make it happen. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's pretty cool so far. The um. That's awesome. But uh, we need to sort of fight up, and also the dates for the business retreat we have so we have the offer i guess we were talking about it live on the air uh yeah right, right, yeah right, at, right after the inspiring tour with nick and sean if there's enough interest and this might be a place to gauge some interest i suppose um we could do our two-day business two and a half day business uh intensive think tank and then i believe nikki simpson and dj pool will be doing an inspiring tour the three or four days after so we'd be so, sandwiched right between those those two so that, guess, that'd be cool yeah, I mean, and we could overlap, or you could, you could overlap for uh, some of both. Mm -hmm. um, and then if somebody wanted to take both uh, or two of the three, they could. Um, yeah, and, and or yeah. just kind of come in for the weekend. It's uh, so we'll have to solidify up the details. Mm -hmm. But that's the yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I, I think you know, I, and I haven't done um, a, a business seminar personally, but I do focus a lot on business and mindset and priorities and um you know your why and all of that type of thing quite a bit uh I manage multiple you know multiple businesses and, and the biggest one is not art related at all so I'm I'm constantly having to shift my mindset and uh and stay focused and I love talking about that stuff I could definitely put together a day or two one thing that I'd like oh, to yeah. do is the spot uh one thing that I'd like to do while we were there if if, if we can make it happen uh would be to to do breakout kind of painting and drawing groups just to make some use of that what looks like a beautiful space oh of course yeah it would be uh remiss of us to to have you there and not do that right of course um to do that and i'm sure that we could set up the uh you know maybe if we have a you know some graphic design in mind you know mm -hmm. might be able to do some paintings or some drawings or some ipad creations or whatever with the intention of bringing it in to make a trifold or to make some sort of poster for uh you know so we could um go over what goes into proper graphic design you know doesn't have you know and or not you can just do it for for fun I don't, you know again we get to put it all together yeah um, yeah. uh yeah i mean I, I would say you know we probably should should hammer out the details if we're going to make it happen and at least put up a landing page where we could send people if they are interested uh and to see if we can gauge enough interest we wouldn't be looking for many people would we what no like five five, five six you people? know i mean maybe six or seven um yeah. you know but it, it gives us the opportunity to really you know, cater the the two days to to them, right? So, if, uh, everyone always has different starting points, and um, you know, it's so having that few people is just amazing. I mean, we did a one of these, you know, with uh with, with Sean and Nick, and by the time you get to critiquing, you know, it's you know, there's so much, there's a, a shared vocabulary, there's a you know, already four for you know, three days of shared experiences and and learning about each other, and. Um, and then, you know, so it becomes really thoughtful. And to your, you know, to your point, you know, you're certainly, you know, most known for, uh, you know, your, your tattooing and your, your painting and your crossing over in the, in the podcasts and all that. But, you know, I know that you also do like mastermind business, you know, four times yeah. a year. You're like, you know, you're yeah, like flying around to like go yeah. and talk with experts. Right. Four <laughs> times a year. I spend uh, for the last almost 10, ten, maybe not 10 years, probably seven or eight years. I've been a member of strategic coach. And of course, when you're a member of some coaching group, they end up pushing you in the direction of other really great coaches and thinkers and business owners and so I've, I definitely find myself in that in that world a lot and I really I, you know I really enjoy it and I think one thing that might be fun with you and I doing something like that together first off it would be for a pretty specific group of people people are trying to whether they're shop owners are looking to make some type of transition I think in their you know in their in their business life maybe they're looking to to step up their 
their um, uh, quality of work life. Oh, maybe they better be a street shop to a, <laughs> to a custom shop, or maybe someone that's looking to go from tattooing in a shop to opening their own studio or, for, or stepping up their studio an existing studio to making it something that's higher, a higher level, but you were really pinned in and dialed in on, on developing processes. Um, and so I think we could probably divide and I'm, you know, probably more so than me. So I think we could probably divide up the workload a little bit, especially with a small group of people and really have some like fun kind of thinking uh, exercises to 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 expand people's uh, mindset over a what, two day, oh, three day period. Uh, it's like a two, two and a half day. So I think uh, Friday is like a crossover day, you know, so we'll probably get started in the afternoon, evening. You know, maybe that's the, uh, you know, we're not doing trust falls or any of that, but, you know, get to know each other kind of stuff, uh, figure out how the how the dynamic is, you know, see who's strength. And part of the beauty of these two is people sharing with each other also, as you know, um, you know, so it's like we, we, you know, I remember as I was doing the lead up to one of the, one of these, somebody that was inside of the group for the couple of days ahead was like, you know, you really should be like making sure that every moment is taken care of and do the itineraries and whatnot. And I'm like, you know, I, I do so many events like that. And uh, this one is pretty cool. It's like we really just say we're going to do one thing at noon or maybe one, um, you know, and then, of course, we're doing something at three or, you know, we're, do we're doing stuff all the time. Right. But um, as far as like a real stringent uh, itinerary, you know, we keep we kind of intentionally keep it loosey goosey, you know, but again, everyone that's there has the intention of, of learning and sharing and getting better and, and figuring out, you know, what you know, again, not, next level is such a weird thing to say, but like where it is that they're going and, and what they can learn from people, right? Um, that's pretty yeah. sad. It's, um, uh, we, we, we can wrap this, you know, this part of the discussion up, but I was, uh, one thing that I would say may, has made such a huge difference to me and coach over the years is while I love the workshops and the curriculum and the, 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 the thinking exercises and all of the little, uh, uh, the things that we do with the coach, most of the value from strategic coach for me has come from, uh, the other participants, like the other the other entrepreneurs that who are in the group, because they're my real accountability partners, you know. And the funny thing is, is like I don't know anything about their business, and obviously there's no other tattooer in the in strategic coach that I know. And so, um, right. so what we so it's not that we know a lot about each other's businesses, but what what we end up doing is helping each other talk through a lot of things that we really already know about our own business, and just holding a you know pulling out the most valuable pieces and then holding each other accountable for, for seeing those things through, you know, the, I was reading some book last night and I forget the quote, but it's like, uh, it's something about, um, uh, it's not, um, uh, the biggest problem with people not reaching their goals isn't that the goal is difficult, but that there is a clearer path to a lesser goal. So you constantly end up doing things that aren't as, or as bold as what you're capable of. And that, that group of people helped me to do things that are bolder than what I would be capable of otherwise. So, so if you, if we had five or six people that came and, and participated in some thinking exercises, they would provide more value to each other probably than we would to them, you know, off the, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if I've ever been accused of not trying to go a little bit too far, <laughs> figure out where the, where the limits are. My, but I, I, but you know, for me, it's like I'm trying to really learn mitigated risk, right? It's like, oh shit, I don't, I don't always have to put it all in. And I remember just leading up to the Colorado convention, so I don't know, maybe five or six years into the into the tattoo shop, and everything was going and rolling. And I was like, oh my god, you know, I spent my whole life figuring out. You know, I started off trying to figure out how to make two nickels into a quarter, and then a quarter into fucking a buck, you know. And then now all of a sudden, I'm on a you know six seven figure business, seven figure business, you know. And it was rolling. I was like, wait, I don't have to risk everything, and um, you know, a year. And I think maybe that lasted for about six months, but because it was in my nature, I was just like, oh, we could buy a theater building. You know, I could go bigger. I could go, you know, let's, you know, now, you know, you know, and, you know, I remember signing those papers for the bank too and being like, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right. You know, now it's like, okay, don't, you know, to your point, like, you know, just sometimes, you know, making sure you're not borrowing more than you have that you could actually pay off right away or, or all those like, you know, fundamental business lessons you know I, I did have to learn the hard way and so many tattoo shops learn the hard way um it's great to be able to like help people not learn the hard way uh, and it's really satisfying to see uh shops tighten their shit up right because you know I'm, I'm still there's still repercussions you know years later uh some of them warranted a lot of and some of them not but you know uh you could you could protect yourself there's no reason why you couldn't right and if i listened to my wife and a couple other people then i would have too so anyways right <laughs> End yeah. of that session. <laughs> right. Well, let's um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's move. Lauren, did we lose you? Did you go to sleep? 
She said she'd be back in a few minutes. Did you prepare okay. your uh, folder of uh, who the fuck did these awesome tattoos? I, this I is a normal not, segment I now. I do have. I, yeah, I, I will prepare some for that. I, I didn't prepare any today, but I do have something to um, that that I've been kind of playing around with that I wanted to kind of introduce uh, awesome. a project. Uh, so like a lot of uh, a lot of other tattooers out there, I've, I've been kind of playing around with the um, the AI um, mm. image generators by using prompts. And some people are doing some really, really cool stuff with that. I'm not mm. doing cool stuff with it at all. I haven't really learned the prompt process. I'm getting better, but I'm definitely not doing things on the level that a, that a lot of these other folks are. And so what I decided I was going to do instead, uh, because I've, I've, I've heard from several uh, high level artists, painters, illustrators, tattooers that are, that are friends of mine, uh, that, you know, getting a text message with an image of some computer generated, you know, AI generated uh, art. And they're going like, holy crap, we're going to be out of a job soon. And there's been this really like, like this mentality of scarcity, you know, where we're just like, oh my God, we're like, we have to where we have a limited amount of time before these uh, robots take over and start drawing pictures better than we do. Uh, I decided to kind of try to take it a different way. And so I've been creating uh, some pretty like abstract um, minimalist types of designs with prompts. And then what I've done for the first time, and I'll show you one example here, is I'm, I'm printing on canvas the loose sort of paintings. And here's one. I can't remember what my prompt was, but I have a series of these. Mm. Uh, and then if you look behind me, I don't know if you can see these two kind of red landscape looking pieces that are that are yep. on my easel. But um, uh, so I've done a few like that. And what I'll do is I'll get something that's kind of loose and then I'll do variations of that exact piece, four or five variations. And I'll find the ones that that allow the most room to explore. And I print them on these cheap canvases and I'm gonna send them out to painters and illustrators that I know to paint on top of them. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So we'll all paint on top of them. I haven't decided yet if we're gonna collab paint, like, you know, like uh, the first one I'm sending, this one I just showed you is going to my buddy, Adam Shaw today, who's one of my favorite painters and illustrators. Uh, he, it's going to him today. And I haven't decided if if we're going to like send it to someone and just let them paint the entire thing. Or in Adam's case, if he's gonna start the painting uh, and then send it back to me and I'll paint on top of it until we find that it's finished. Uh, we'll just let the, you know, we'll let the process make that decision for us. But I think it's like a fun way to kind of play with the, this new style of, of art. And these canvases were like, these are 11 by 14s. They're not the greatest, you know, but they're fine. And they're 12, the, it was 12 bucks for an 11 by 14. So with shipping and all, I got like five, six canvases shipped to me for 60 bucks. And so, which is, you know, that's a fun, you know, that, that's, that's an affordable uh, 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 kind of thing to do for such a fun project, I think. So, so I'm excited. I'm excited to send it out, send them out. If any other tattooers want to participate or, or artists or whatever, uh, as we move forward, uh, reach out to me, uh, info at firesidetattoo.com. And, um, and we'll see if we can't maybe make a little collaborative project out of this and maybe even have a show since it's real live paintings, you know. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Gabe, did we lose you? Oh, no, no, I'm in the background here. I was just oh. uh, feeling a little chatty, and so I was uh, making way for you. <laughs> right on. Yeah. I'm also in the uh, chat room here. There's you know, some people saying hello and whatnot, so uh, What's up, paying a little attention to them. Yeah, yeah, we've got a few folks. we got uh, not a lot on Fireside today. Dan, uh, Amber Mordane. Uh... You know, I was thinking Dan should, uh, not that he has excess time, but um, <laughs> using the AI uh, prompts to go after logos and shit, well, you know yeah. that is, yeah, th that's what they seem to be doing almost flawlessly. Um, I watched a YouTube video on. Uh, I've been watching a lot on, on making better prompts, and with their, and of course there are different um, programs that people are using. I've been using Dolly for these, but mm -hmm. uh, there are there are quite a few of them. My son just introduced me to another one that's super simple uh, over the weekend that I haven't played with yet, but. Um, uh, one thing that they're doing really well is creating like flat graphic logos. If you can learn to prompt them the right way, I watched this guy create. He he came up with this scenario as if Apple uh, were creating their own like um, Xbox or, or PlayStation controller, and uh, and so he did like real 3D models of the controller first with in the in the style of the you know that Apple that minimalist kind of style that Apple would do, which was pretty cool. And then he said, okay, make a logo for the company. And these logos were like awesome. I mean, yeah. really, really good. 
I couldn't believe it. Like thoughtful, like really smart, really clever use of light and shadow and like, but in a flat, you know, graphic kind of way. I was like completely impressed. I, I would have, you know, I, I would do on 99 designs and pay 500 bucks for, you know, for that logo. It's, yeah. Uh, like, you know, I, of course, you know how it rolls, right? I saw a couple of YouTube videos and I'm like, oh shit. And I went right there and I got my credits and I started doing stuff that looked like, mm, eh, and was like, well, Someone that's a little bit more has a little bit more time devoted towards figuring out how to be a uh, AI. Uh, what do you call them? prompter artist? Yeah. I guess right. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't know the terminology. I definitely. I mean, we'll definitely do some fireside episodes on the technology in in the future. Yeah. Uh, as you know, as people get better and better with it. Yeah. Uh, the, o- the, the only reason why I kind of have some hope for uh, you know the way that the, the the machine language, at least the way that it's learning now, right? It's like predicting the future based off of the algorithms of the past, right? And then in some ways that's always been copyable. Anything that we ever come up with is copyable. And with technology, more and more of it's becoming copyable. And copy- I mean, you, you, who, you can't find a visual artist to cry on the shoulder of a musician that, you know, technology could take over, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like, because digital allows things just to, you know, basically be replicated without, you know, with very minimal cost. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, what the AI can't, you know, and it could, it could predict the future ba- better than people really can based on the past, but it can't like base the future based off of like hunches and things that should happen in the future, right? Like, I mean, and, and in some ways, like, again, this is where the this utopia happens, right? If all of a sudden the AI is like the easiest route is for, you know, self destruction, like, we literally need to have the people being like, yeah, but we could use the AI, you know, to steer it towards. Mm-hmm. you know uh healthy goals right you know i don't know i listen to i mean we're on the social media so we might as well we could talk about it a little bit right there's the um what's there's a uh, you know the social dilemma guys you know they have some podcasts you know they, they talk a lot about how the algorithms are designed to keep us sucked in and you know addicted um when they don't have to right and there's ways that we could uh you know make sure that uh the technologies are better and, and youtube is actually slowly getting sucked into that right we're i mean I'm, we're doing shorts now of all the things and the mm-hmm. anyways yeah 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 well I'm, I'm excited about this you know particular technology for no other reason just thinking of it as a tool rather than as a replacement and of course you know at, at this point I'm, we're, we're not tattooers themselves aren't super threatened if i'm a design if i'm a graphic designer if i design logos uh i might see this <laughs> current technology as a little bit of a threat but uh but you know for for tattooers I'm, I'm thinking of it still as a great tool particularly to start off ideas you know a lot of times i, I leave a consultation without sure. a clear idea of what the composition looks like you know i you know we've, i've made all the notes i've talked to the client and i'm kind of fumbling with with ideas and just being able to jump onto one of these discord servers or or into dolly's website and and throw a few prompts out using the keywords that the uh that the client gave me and just see you know and just you know just say like well this was you know this is kind of what they said and this is the little bit of a vision that i have and then see what happens from it you know it's obviously isn't something you're going to trace and stencil uh but you could at least from a compositional standpoint from a color standpoint from you know a hierarchy of shape standpoint you might get something especially if it generates you know four images within 10 seconds and then you can say i like this one the best of the four shoot me four more that are built off of this one Mm -hmm. and just continue Mm -hmm. to do that until you run out of credits you know sure Uh, sure you know, uh, Kasparov, it's the conclusion that Kasparov has come to the, the chess champion uh, who, who got beat by uh, AI under, you know, it, it, by now, like the computers are beating, you know, people at Go and whatnot, right? But the, the, the human combination with AI always beats AI or, you know, AI beats person, but person and AI always beats AI for now, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but again, part of it's, you know, you, to your point, you, you, using these as tools, and that's what I'm saying, it's like, we want to engage. And, and, you, and you've been experimenting with some of these with, uh, you know, some, you know, headlines and, and trying to figure out how to, you know, yeah, create our, our yeah. scripts that are a little bit more um, creative, like in ways, right? It's like, there's ways that, you know, again, to your point, it's like, you, you can't like just copy paste that shit and it looks like crap and it doesn't really perform well. Uh, but like, you, oh, wait a minute, maybe I could actually think about it and do my own research. I guess I off, it's like a uh, stock photos or stock video or stock audio, right? Whenever I see that stuff like out in the real world in production, for the most part, I'm like, oh, no, 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 that, that's meant for you to use as like a sketch, you know, and then put the real banjo on top of that, not that stock shit that we've all heard a million times or like, and, and you know, not using the same second rows off of the, 
third page of the Google search, you know, you're supposed to use that and then do your thing, uh, you know, over it or something. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's it's a it's a jumping off point, but I think it's really great whenever you find yourself, uh, you know, uninspired sometimes, or just or just afraid to do the same thing, you know, over again. A lot of times when a client comes in and wants something, uh, you know, from from me, wants to get tattooed, their idea isn't, a, you know, that original. Most of the time, whenever I hear it, I go like, oh yeah, I know exactly how I would normally do that. But you know, what if you know, nearly you know, twenty seven years in, I don't want to do it that way this time. What if I can like prompt something and get a completely new idea to start you know sure. as a base and i think that's a fun way to think about this but yeah to your to your point I, I i wasn't even relating the two for whatever reason but i did subscribe to jasper uh dot ai which is a uh, which is also now they're starting to get into this image game as well but but sure. originally they were um like an, it, they help you come up with great headlines or blog posts or you know you could say something like you know give me you know 300 words on you know, the evolution of tattoo machines, it wouldn't be very good at that because there's just not enough information out there for it to, for it to, you know, to find it thoughtful together, but it might give you a good start where you could at least, uh, you know, start editing down from there. But if you had, if it were something like real estate or digital marketing or something where there's just trillions of pieces of content out there, it would do an awesome sure. job putting together that like top mm -hmm. 10 marketing secrets of 2022. It could do that with no, no help at all. You know, uh, sure. yeah. so. well, hey, uh, speaking of human uh, beings and real original uh, ideas, have you caught up with uh, uh, Jeff Gogway and Laura Jade's new uh, magazine? You know, Dan uh, shot me a text photo of of it. Uh, and I know uh -huh. he's in the chat. A, 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 let us and know. We, yeah. In, in the chat rooms or anywhere. Has anybody uh, seen it or heard? It? I've got it right here so I can show it off. If, uh, yeah, I'd love to see I, it. Know, I will show it off. The um but I want to see a little action first. So you buy it. Uh, funny that you ask. Uh, <laughs> you could head straight over to um, Olin Jar is the name of it. Okay. So, sorry, this is a new website. Okay. Olin Jar. Okay. Uh, o L I N J A R. Right. And they have been shipped. You know, it's uh, Jeff and Laura. They haven't updated their blog. But if you head on over to purchase, um, yeah, I'll show it. I can show it off here. Uh, in person here um because i got my good camera i've got my light i just got it. i was wicked excited you know and um it's definitely something that you're going to be putting time into you know it's it's thought out it's not uh you know meant to be you know just devoured really quickly like instant but you know this is hana mantra you're fucking badass it's on some of the videos of course um you know, there's trips and interviews, uh, you know, the, a lot of Japan. Yeah. yeah. How do I do this here? So, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah Are they control planning them. to do this? Do, do you know? Is it something they're doing quarterly? or? Uh, I believe it's quarterly, yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, uh, yes, the, idea, the, the goal is to be quarterly. Uh, it's their self-publishing, right? So, um I don't know, you know, hopefully that means, uh, you know, every three months, but if it means every four months, you know, they're, they're artists and people, they, they tattoo every day and whatnot. And, uh, uh, yeah. So, so you buy it by the issue. You're not subscribing for a year or anything like no, that. No, no. Uh, I believe you subscribe for the year here and okay. uh, yeah, you'll get, you know, so definitely four issues, right? I mean, I remember, you remember uh, Tattoo Artist Magazine, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, with we, self, you know, publishing, it's, I mean, and Jeff and Lauren, they're, they're, they're pros for sure. So I'm not, I don't want to uh, second guess anything. I'm just saying, um, they say it's quarterly, but yeah. But uh, here we go. There's a U.S. subscription, Canadian subscriptions, internationals, uh, single issues. So you can get the, the first issues here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, perfect. I will definitely jump on in. Yeah, I have no, you know, I, I you know, I worked with, with Jeff and Lauren in the past. I have no affiliation whatsoever now. So I don't, I know as much as you do now. You know, I've gone to the yeah. website once and uh, I did get it. So uh, I did subscribe to it. So uh, yeah. certainly everyone should. I would, uh, um, you what, know, is uh, term, what does the term Olinjar mean? Do you know? Uh, you know, it's uh, right here, I think. Let's see. Um, I don't want to speak for them or misquote. They do uh, talk about it. Swedish tradition for nonlinear. Uh, but again, um, all of it's worth kind of settling in, right? So, you know, they came on, uh, upon this, you know, I, I believe in one of their trips to Japan. And, uh, and you know, again, I, I don't want to, I haven't devoured it properly. You know, I've spent my my 15 to 20 minutes, you know, uh, you know, 
uh, going through it. It's, it's pretty fun. It's exciting. But uh, um, uh, like Dan, I said, just, Dan just commented that the first hundred people that buy it get a free uh, art print from Dave Koenig. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, did you get one? Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I think Dave is supposed mm -hmm. to be in Richmond this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe. We can... uh, no, no, it was uh, this last weekend was the Resurrection Island uh, tattoo. Oh, wait, yeah, where's Dan going? Dan? No, Dan's going to Richmond. That's what you were saying. Yes. I was, no, thinking... I was saying, I think Dave Koenig. Isn't Dave Koenig going to oh, be? Oh, Dave Koenig. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He is. Yes. I think so. And he did the poster for it, too. Yeah. 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 Well, um, yeah, that's cool. I'll, I'll definitely grab a grab an issue of that or i guess go ahead and subscribe to the for the year to uh, yeah i mean uh, anybody watching this that loves tattoos should probably just go subscribe for the year i mean yeah i um i never subscribed to tattoo artist magazine mm -hmm. i just bought them you know occasionally sure. and i wish i had i wish i had them i wonder if can you go back and buy all of like buy bundles of them now i wonder yeah i'm sure you could on ebay yeah, the, uh, yeah. It was when I remember the very first issue uh, with uh, Adrian Lee. I believe it was the first issue with Adrian Lee. Might have been the second, well, first or second. I remember all of them. I remember, uh, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, uh, crash. But uh, you know, the, one of the main differences, uh, and I, I don't think Jeff and Laura are going to be like hammering out uh, tattoo conventions everywhere and like putting them out through uh, you know wholesalers and whatnot. Maybe they will. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, my guess is that if you subscribe to it, you'll you know when when the issues are done, they'll send them right to you. And uh, and that's also, as everyone knows, that's the way that you guarantee that projects like this continue is when you uh, you know give the regular support. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's a, a labor of love. It's an independent magazine, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, good stuff. I wonder. I wonder their uh, thoughts on the digital takeover of um, of uh, of the art world here with AI I, prompts. I, I think this is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. <laughs> i think this is the response you yeah. know they're, they're being really thoughtful they're making sure the interviews are you know have depth again and are tapping into like what's going on and uh you know i know the covid fuck around with it they were going to interview uh, marcus and uh, kaya up in canada nice uh, they probably still will i'm sure they will mm -hmm. but um yeah no it's uh it's it's fun yeah, yeah. like i said it's labor love right so they, they put a lot of thought into it so if uh yeah yeah uh, another comment uh, from from Dan that Jasper has been really great for prompt prompting writing and uh, and Dan has been using our Jasper account more more than I have uh, trying to help us with some of the deep dive pages for the new Fireside site and I know that's a uh, yeah, that's a big thing sometimes whenever you're like watching a video and you, you're trying to figure out how to make it sound concise or to expand on it or whatever else it's uh, you just end up in these. Uh, or day with days that you're in a funk and you can't come up with anything that's where these now, these, now you yeah. mentioned not necessarily being threatened because you know they're still using you know as, as a tool and whatnot but what what you know you know obviously one of the other stories that keeps going around in the news is they put uh you know celebrities are have the money to, to get put under anesthesia to get their tattoos yeah you know from three to four you know badass admit you know these days badass admittedly celebrities i know there's one guy who's a uh i can't pronounce the names I'm so hard, but you know the point point is you know what happens when the surgeon you know the, the robotic surgeon can like you know go in there and actually poke the holes you know, yeah. with a, a, a dynamic configuration of needles at the right angle, you know, mm -hmm. while taking the, you know, the blood sugar to see if you need any more, just a little bit of lidocaine at the, you know, so all of a sudden you might not even need to go under yeah. because it's, a, you know, completely precise. Um, yeah. And I suppose that, you know, there's always going to be like the poor man's hand done tattoos that are actually done by electric machines, but um, yeah. right. Those yeah, surgeons I... are coming. Those robots are coming. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, the, uh... Oh, I can't even remember who I had the conversation with. Someone a couple of years ago was talking about the ability to um, to design a, a machine to basically put a, um, something where the armature bar might be on a machine. So on a pin style machine, maybe something that's just up and above where the cartridge sits that sh that that um, uses something like lidar that 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 shoots a laser at the point of contact with the skin and can judge based on the um, the cells uh, and how they're they can it can judge skin trauma and literally disconnect the cartridge from the machine so the machine might still be running but the cartridge would stop uh, would stop 
poking. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, so that was uh, I was like, oh, that's that's you know, that's interesting. So they were they were using it as an example of how you might get optimal uh, saturation without overworking the skin. My my thought on that is you probably if you're if you're getting to the point that the thing is recognizing the skin's being overworked, that doesn't mean that it's properly saturated. It may mean that it's not saturated at all and just beat up. But at sure. least you, got, you might want to know that either way. Right, uh, right. It might be a uh, you know a tool for for apprentices like when you like kind of like uh, whenever my I first got a dirt, a dirt bike for my son, we put a governor on there where it wouldn't take off fast and it topped out at like fifteen miles an hour. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cascade tra like tra that. training wheels for the uh, for yeah. the machines. Hey, uh, so it sounds like uh, there's some questions here in uh, in your chat room or, or I guess yeah. this is a reinventing chat room. Let me. Uh, um, so this is one from Dan. So, hey, guys, is it artistically possible to have the focal point of your tattoo in the background? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can have a focal point wherever. The first thing that pops into my mind uh, that would be an example of that, I don't even know if you could still find it, but Nick Baxter did uh, like an eagle with a gas mask holding arrows and stuff probably 15 years ago. But but the foreground is a is a wing that is out of focus. And then the, the midground uh, is the actual head of the bird with the uh, with the mask on, and the, you know obviously the trick for that is is, is just the level of it, they just it it really comes down to contrast and edges. So so the foreground shape was much this uh, fella. Let's see, who is it? That one gas mask. So like, I'm, maybe, I'm doing my I'm doing okay, my best, maybe, man. Maybe, it's an eagle with okay. a gas mask. Maybe that's wings. the one that I'm thinking of. <laughs> so so if you look that foreground wing on the far uh right side is completely yeah, yeah. soft edged as it goes down and then behind that would be the you know the mask and the eagle which is in focus sharper edges higher contrast and then gets softer again as it goes back to the back wing and you could use that like if he had i feel like he did another one where a wing it may not be an eagle i, I might be mixing yeah. up two different tattoos but i feel like he did one where a wing intercepts a lot of the body and maybe even part of the head or something like it sweeps oh. forward but either way, this is a good example. Okay. Uh, if you could picture that wing sweeping more in front of the gas mask and the and the body of the bird, but still being as soft and out of focus, you know, it is the foreground image, but like, yeah. the thing closest to you. But it's not the focal point. The focal point's in the midground with the, you know, with the head, and that's done through you know using value contrast and then and then edges. You know, it's kind of funny. In my in my brain, I was thinking um, the highest value thing that you could have in a background that would be a focal point that could be small and in the background. And first thing I thought of was a mushroom cloud. Of course, it's fucking these days too. Yeah. Um, but I think I thought it was ironic that this is a piece that you pulled up. And for me, it's cloud. like, you know, there's a mushroom cloud <laughs> in the background, right? So it's like, even though, you know, from, you know, and, and focal point also could be played with, right? So it's like, you know, yeah. nuclear Armageddon is what's happening, right? Uh, this is in the foreground, but you know, the story part is fucking right there is coming at you. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, as far as focal points go, it doesn't mean there's not, you know, a single focal point. You typically you'll have something you want people to recognize first, but then hopefully that leads them to something, you know, else. And there's a secondary element that, you know, that, 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 that pulls them in as well. Uh, Cause you want people looking at the design as long as, as long as they can, or as long as you can keep them there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's see, we've got another question. Have you seen uh, these stick-on tattoos? So um, I don't know if you've caught the news, I catch the news all the time, but uh, basically they have little patches, you know, so actually this is not a bad, I'll learn jars that we can plug, but like if each of these was like little needles, so it almost looks oh. like a little needle pad and then they stick the needles on you and you could keep it in there for a little while. I presume that's what they're talking about. Maybe this is from uh, Tommy K. Um, Wait, the needles puncture your skin and, and deposit ink or no? Exactly. Yes. I believe oh. now I've seen a story that's gone through the Google. I'm presuming that this, what, that's what this question is about. Um, oh. You know, and you, there's a couple of different stories. I think there's maybe, you know, there's some, uh, there's a YouTube channel that's got like all the pop tattoo stuff that goes around with it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, cool, I guess. Like, I, I don't fight over, I wouldn't want to fight over like entry level tattoos that you could just stick on like a sticker like that. Like, I mean, mm. you know, those are great tattoos for apprentices to learn how the skin works and how the how to control the, the machines and stuff. So I would prefer that instead of people sticking on something like that, they go to a, a tattooer and get it done for real. 
Uh, but on the other hand, if at some point there's a sticker like that that could do a tattoo that's somewhat convincing, I mean, I don't know what you're going to say about it except for fucking shit moves on. Now, the ones that I've seen, they don't look that great. You know, it looks like there's, you know, the needles aren't that close. It's, you know, it doesn't, they're not super impressive or whatever. But that said, you know, you put that there and then you put one next to it and next to it and you could have a three step process where all of a sudden you get a little bit of cool. I don't know. They have, yeah, yeah. Maybe so. That's my question is, what do you think? Tony, what do you think about uh, the stick-on tattoos? I, I, I can't even, I can't, I can't quite, I mean, I can visualize what you're saying. I would love to see it, it you know, put to use. I, I can't imagine that, yeah, to, exactly. I think that, if, I mean, unless the needles are, even if the needles are right up against each other, you're still going to see individual kind of dots. So I can't imagine how you would get any color saturation that that way. Uh, yeah, maybe you could do it like uh, screen printing t-shirts where you just have a registration mark and you like drop all your blacks in and then drop your reds and then drop your yellows uh -huh. and then you end up with a finished tattoo. Uh -huh. so, you know, I, I, I'm sure I told the story before, but I could tell one more time. I'll try to, to expedite it a little bit, but somewhat similar to this question, I suppose. And, um, you know, there was a tattoo convention in Empire State in, in New York that I went to with Guy one year. And so I was working in the, the booth with him. And, uh, you know, we were kind of up in the balcony over the rounds. So there was plenty of time where we weren't like super slammed, right? And there was this, this fellow who was selling uh, inks or at an ink company, started talking to the guy. And he's like, hey, you know, I, I make inks that they disappear after a year. Uh, yeah. And like, guy didn't run them right off. I was like, okay, well, this isn't going to go very far. But guy didn't run them off. He's like, oh, well, okay, that's cool. And then the guy was forward enough. He's like, well, let me tell you about him. So then he started telling guy about these inks that are going to disappear in a year. And then he's talking about getting investment money, big thing, how many people, how much money guy can make by doing these tattoos on people that'll disappear after a year. And, and you know, and again, I'm not his man, I'm not guy's manager or nothing. I work, you know, if he's at an event of mine, I might be like, you know, guy, we're, we're, we're really busy. Can you come over here? I'm like, do you, but I'm like, whatever, write a show. And you could talk to a guy as long as I'm, I'm not, I'm just going to, I'm listening. And I'm thinking of all the fucking clever things I'm going to say in my head, right? To this guy who's trying to convince guy to use disappearing ink. And uh, finally, after like five or 10 minutes, because he gets to his full pitch, guy's perfectly patient, you know, there's no one, nothing else going. And, uh, and then the guy goes, so what, what, what do you think? And uh, I'm like, oh, my God, what is guy going to say? I've been waiting for five, you know, five minutes, almost maybe more. And uh, he goes, well, I don't think anybody wants to pay my day rate for a tattoo that will disappear after a year. Yeah. And I was like, how reasonable. Yeah, you know he wasn't snarky he didn't yeah. fucking piss the guy like he was just yeah. explained to him in plain english his thoughts on you know yeah. it's okay other people could do that but no one's gonna you know it doesn't really involve me much and um yeah. you know so yeah. a, a lot of questions like that but you know, yeah yeah like and that that those there there is a market for that that a company that's doing that exact thing just got a massive in, investment 20 plus million I'm sure it's the same. To, yeah, yeah to i'm, I'm near positive the same company yeah yeah uh the, i know we're about to wrap it up um we cut one let's see we've got a couple more i think dan's pulling questions from other chat rooms and put them in fireside uh, uh during a uh let's see do, doing a wolf tattoo tomorrow black and gray the first few times uh the fur was too wide so i was wondering to use a three round line or someplace to make it work is it more the angle the curved mag the oh just trying to figure out how to do fur yeah there's i mean there's not a single way to, to tattoo fur layering i think is is important you know making sure that you're not overworking the skin getting down thinking about the big shapes first you know the light side of the fur and the dark side of the fur so blocking in the masses first and then coming back maybe with yeah. it doesn't matter the needle configuration you could do it with you know small liners you could do it with a mag turned on its side um you know it's just a matter of not overworking the skin uh stepping away from it squinting your eyes making sure that the mass is read one place that people mess up a lot with fur is that they get they they get too caught up in the detail and they end up flattening the whole thing out so when you see wolf heads that look like they're you know like this like completely flat it's that there, there's so much detail in the shadow shapes that is trying to to grab attention from the from the light side so make sure that you're able to squint and read the form as a sphere or as a cylinder or whatever it is and that's far more important than the texture of the fur but um oh. I also, I do have a who the fuck done it tattoo because we can't okay. not do the segment. All right. We're down to the last two minutes. We better get it done. Lauren, are you here? Are you going to do the? I'm here. <laughs> okay. Boom. Oh. <laughs> Look at that shit. Speaking of uh, black uh, and gray. Not a David mm. Gluck. Not David Gluck, right? Not uh, David Gluck. Good. David Gluck. Good, good call. Good, good. Yeah. David's on the awesome. The, I guess the right leg, but the, the one more healed piece looks like his work in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a good guess. Do we have any action in the chat rooms? This is a, oh, I love this guy. He's been around, uh, well, not, you know, not for a while in America. 
in a while, but uh, not so Robin not, Lee Coates, right? No, definitely not. Nope, uh, uh, not American. Not American. So we can okay. uh, start to to narrow it down. Mm. Yeah, and I'm bad at this game. Not American. World no. famous, no doubt. World famous. Oh shoot, that should be a giveaway. A partner uh, with a uh, another world class tattooer with a world class shop in the... not, not New York. Nope, not New York. People, if people, if anybody starts guessing countries, we could start narrowing it down. Venezuela. Do you play hot and cold like this? Oh, yeah. geez, Venezuela. Oh, wait. I can't. I can't call out who's. Uh, no, no, not Venezuela. Nope, not not South America. An English speaker, native English speaker. Oh, I gave that one away. Well, I guess there's a, little, a fair amount of countries where people will speak uh, English. Okay. Um, okay. So not it, Tom. It, uh, no. A Canadian? Nope, no, nope. but the, the the most colonial of the countries, I suppose, uh, from England. I, I don't know if that's fair to yeah. say because uh, there's probably some others that can compete for that title. But uh, okay, so we got a, a badass English uh, tattooer. You, you, there's a double photo y thing kind of going on that they, yeah, that, they, that he does photo. fairly often. They, uh, I can I have to see any any other any last uh, from mm, Spain? Nope, uh, not from Spain. Yeah. No. Nope. Um, okay. I'm gonna scroll down. Should I do it? Should I do it? Oh, Jason Butcher, I did it. Boom. Oh man, I wouldn't have guessed him. That's Jason, a really nice. Uh, uh, okay. Jason Butcher, fucking uh, out of control. Uh, yeah, nice. That's why it's called the game of uh, of guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his work here. Uh, uh, that's really cool. Always appreciate the. Uh, his work and uh, and again he's got uh, what's the uh, studio there? Um, oh, we're over. Sorry, uh, sorry, Jason. Can't yeah. plug your uh, studio, but you should go yeah. do a search for Jason Butcher Tattoo. Absolutely, and uh, go do guest spots at his shop. Get hired by them if you can. All right. Well, anyone uh, anyone coming to the Richmond Tattoo and Arts Festival this weekend? Make sure to swing by the Fireside Booth. Say hello. Uh, we're going to be podcasting, tattooing a little bit, mainly podcasting, walking around with the camera. Maybe another rapid fire thing. Show me some rapid fire ideas. Oh, and likewise, if you're going to be at the Needle Jig Northeast meetup that's happening the Monday and Tuesday after, I think the 24th and 25th, um, or if you want to beam in online, we're doing a webinar version. So if you go to uh, needlejig.com, then uh, yeah, there's uh, live tickets and or virtual tickets. We're beaming out from Jiminy Peak, so it should be uh, a fun time. Awesome. All right. Sorry, sorry, Lauren. Lauren, are you going to pop in just to, uh, to say goodbye? Yeah, thanks, guys. I'll uh, definitely be here next week. I'm excited to hear how Richmond goes. Lauren's in her pajamas. She's going back to bed. <laughs> no, uh -huh. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I have some cool pictures to show you next week from some of the shoots that we did out there. So awesome. you guys will like them. Can't wait. All, All right. right. See you guys later. Have, have a good Cheers. week.